Welcome everyone. This is Pseudorite 201. This is the intermediate course. It's for people who are new to writing with AI and it says we're going to write a story from start to finish. We are not, we don't have that much time, but we will get into generating prose. And then I'm skipping tomorrow, Thursday at the same time, I have a 301 and that's how to tweak the prose that you get to make it better. And of course, at any time you can ask questions about any of it, basically. This is laid out like all the other courses. We have, have the introduction and the greeting and a demonstration and then a Q&A. But as we go along, if there are any questions about what I'm covering, please go ahead and ask it. Either ask it in the chat or on, because I really want an interactive course. I want you to get what you need from this class. And this is just showing your curriculum. The 101 is the beginning class. 201 is the intermediate class. 301 is the advanced class. And then we have some special topics classes that are 401. So that's our course curriculum as we've, as we've laid it out just now. Oh, and Nicole has put the link to sign up for the 301 if you're not already signed up for it. And I will, in just a few minutes, I will <laughs> stick the link from the last night's 101 in there. We can do that. But in the meantime, let's switch over to Pseudorite and see what we can do. May I drop I a promo too, Miss Lynn? You absolutely can. <laughs> um, Another instructor, Tabby, and I have been doing a series of classes called AI and the Author, and it's Fix My, whatever we're focused on that day. We have settings this Friday, and hopefully with them talking about the new entity box coming out, we will be able to share some of that too. If you just want a class that's going to focus on setting, like your city, town, things like that we'll be going over, this Friday's class will do that. And the 26th, which is also a Friday, we will be doing a class focused solely on beats. So if you struggle with beats, that'll be the class for you. Good. I just wish you had that at a different time. Sorry, that's what worked for Tabby. I know. <laughs> I'll see if I can convince her to change it for next round. Nah. <laughs> Probably by then, my schedule will have switched. So it shouldn't matter much at all. Let's see, I will share my screen. And we can keep working on the one we did yesterday, or we can start a new one. It's up to you all. This is your home screen for Suda, right? And all your projects are going to be under here. It should be the most recent at the top, but after the thing they did yesterday, if if you haven't gone in there and switched some things around, your oldest ones will be up toward the top. You never know. But we did the 101 from yesterday was the fantasy. And some of you may have left. We did the visualize. And this is the, we gave it the description of the lamp from the text. And this is the picture it generated for us with him coming out of the lamp and the smoke lamp. Um, so this is the text we wrote with the uh, part of it we wrote with first draft part of it we wrote with the rewrite and the guided write and the write so today we're going to get into the story bible and in the story bible we have the brain dump that we put it in last night from the first draft text that we generated. We have the genre and we said it's a fan fantasy genie fairy tale. It's got 10 chapters. And right now our style says deep third person point of view, vivid description, varied sentence structure. This is a synopsis that it generated for us. <clears throat> because we have the cats, we ask it for cats. We generated the characters, 
And we then we went back and we added the uh, Myers-Briggs types and the strengths and weaknesses. I think when we did that, we lost some of the physical description, but we could always add that back in if we wanted to. So we have our cast of characters there. And we did an outline. If you remember, we combined chapter one and chapter two because the chapter one was all in her ordinary world. And I didn't think that would be too exciting. I'm going to renumber the chapters. I don't know whether that matters or not. It doesn't on the beats, but it, it probably does on the chapters. I know a quick way to find out. If I come down here and say create a chapter, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, I guess it doesn't. I guess it doesn't. It just counts. So that's all right. If we've got our outline the way we want it, what we can do is we can come down and start our first chapter. If we click on Create Chapter, it's going to give us the blank document for Chapter 1. Chapter 1, the first thing we need is we need beats. Beats are simply the actions that happen during that chapter or scene. For Pursuit or Write, the word chapter really means scene. If you look at the little question mark here, oops, the beats, well, make it small so you can see it. The beats are only based on the, it, it's based on just about everything. The brain dump, the genre, the style, the synopsis, the character, and the outline. It's going to look at all those things and determine what beats need to be in that first chapter. What's going to happen in the first chapter? If you are a plotter and you know what's going to happen, you can put your own beats in. If not, you can let the AI generate them for you. And I'm going to click on Generate Beats. And it's going to think about it for a while. Okay. Usually it gives us 12, more or less. This one gives us 15. Now, I have a feeling that some of these beats are pretty thin. Okay, so we're introducing her. She's scrounging for scraps in the alleyways. We're going to see her kindness. Then she finds the lamp. What you want in a beat is you want enough action, visual action, so that the AI has something to work with, has something to show to create about 300 words. And if we don't have enough to create 300 words, the AI gets creative on its own, or it jumps to another beat or even another chapter to bring information in. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to get rid of the second beat. I'm going to combine it. Just like we combine the chapters, we can combine the beats. And so we're going to have all that happen in the first beat. And then, okay, she... I'm going to do the same thing with this one. She's excited about it. She rubs it. Uh, we're going to describe... Uh, Azareth, whatever his name is. Um, I think I'm going to combine most of these. I don't know. Have they been messing around with beats again, Nicole? <laughs> Not that I'm aware of, but considering they just... Actually, I do vaguely remember they'll maybe experimenting with something. Okay. I think they're experimenting with the different models on the back end like they did with Synopsis. Yeah, so something's happened. Okay. Might leave that. Put this. I'm not taking the time to really look at this and edit this. The more you get the beats down for what you want, the less editing you'll have to do in your prose. 
So it does behoove you to spend some time working on your beats and working on your outline till you get the story the way you want it. Okay. I'm going to just keep combining for a while. Uh, oh, good. It does come up with a cliffhanger, and that's what we want. I don't have to renumber. It doesn't matter what the numbers are as long as it starts with the number here, with the number one. But I do want to put a header on it. And I like to enclose my header in square brackets. You don't have to put anything around your header. You can use parentheses. You can use square brackets. Different people have different techniques. But mine just happens to be square brackets. And I will say third person deep point of view from Lily's perspective. Um, show don't tell. It likes to tell a lot. Um, Nicole's going to disagree with me here. But I use the action instead of dialogue tags, because if you don't do something about dialogue tags, it will give you an adverb for every speech speech phrase. And it says end on a cliffhanger, but I'm going to reiterate that. What do you use, Nicole, instead of character action? Mm -hmm. I don't do any of that now, because I... I remember when I was asking for action beats, that's when it would always put those phrases. And it's done great since I perfected my style, tweaked it so much Good. to my liking. Good. I'm not even really getting the dialogue, those annoying phrases that we don't like. Good. Okay. Here we have a check beat button. And if you have a blank line or something in your beats, that will use that as another beat. And because there isn't anything in it, the AI will be happy to make up something for you. So you won't be happy with it, trust me. So it knows which is the header, and it knows these are the beats. And you see, it renumbered the beats for me. So now I have nine. I'll be happy with that for a while. So once we've got the beats where we think we want them, and I didn't really, as I said, edit them really, check them out. If you have a couple of beats where it says introduce, your character, it will act like that is the first time the character appears. So you'll have some of the same description again. So anytime here we have introduced the sorcerer, which is fine because this is the first time that he's come in. But if, if we introduce Lily again, we'd want to change that word to be something else. I guess it's good. When we generate the chapter, we have quite a choice of LLM models to choose from. The default is balanced, which is GPT-4 Turbo. Um, it doesn't cost as much as either Most Accurate or Opus. Those are the spendy ones. Um, most Accurate is GPT-4. It follows your instructions a little bit more closely than some of the other ones do. Best, best Pros is Claude 2.0, and it does a good job most of the time. That used to be my favorite. Fastest is GPT-3, and it works really well for fast-moving scenes, fight scenes. Unfiltered is your one that you can use to get not safe for work content out of. It is Manser's Weaver. And then we have Goliath and Ereboros. A lot of people really are liking Ereboros, but it does, it tends to do one really good stride and then lose track. Nicole and John Crusson have done a video testing various models, and it's on Nicole's YouTube channel. Check that out if you want to check out some of the different models without using your own credits. Claude 3 Opus is the big one that they just released, and it does pretty good, but it's very expensive. Claude 3 Sonnet 
is almost as good, just not quite, but it's about a quarter of the cost. And Haiku, I haven't played around with it yet, but it's the cheapest. If you're trying something out and you're wondering whether it's going to work or not, I really suggest you use a cheaper model. And then if it's giving you something that you, you might run it through a more expensive model. And Mythomax and Mixtrol B and Mistral Medium. And Nicole is more the expert on those than I am. I've heard lots of good things about Mixtrol Medium. Have, how do you well, like? Which one is it that people are liking? Mixtral? Mixtral with an X for cheap stuff, but it can go crazy at the end for long stuff. But uh -huh. that Mistral Medium, that got a lot of high praise when it first came out. Oh, good. So it depends on your writing style. And for me, a lot of it depends on the genre. I find that one will work better for one genre than another genre. Uh but I also tend to run several models because I want to see what they'll do. Mistral hasn't been charging me for some reason. Oh, okay. It generates, but there's no charge. Yeah, I knew some of them, and I think it was I think it was free when it came out. I didn't know if it started charging or not. So that's good. <laughs> So let's, because we don't know what it's going to do, let's try balance first. And then we can play around and do some of the others. Uh, okay. And it's telling me, it thinks it's going to write about 1,800 words, which may or may not be ballpark at all. And it's going to cost about 17,000 credits. We'll see. Okay. So if I click on generate chapter, it's preparing. And I can pause it, and it will finish the beat. It processes two beats at a time, which Pseudo-Write calls a stride. And so it will do beat one and two, and then it should stop. And that, those two beats gave us 539 words. Remember I said it's about 300 words per beat. So that's in the ballpark there. We have her slender fingers, etch with dirt, shaking from the morning chill. Okay, so we've got some description here. We're talking about scarcity. So we're going into her life that she's not off. She found a piece of moldy bread and that was a victory. So I don't think this text is bad at all. Oh, but she, okay, so she gives the bread to a merchant nearby. Okay, so that's comes up from the beat that says we were going to look at her kindness. And then she goes on searching. The object called to her, but not with sound. The lamp ornate in it, ancient. Okay, so she rubs it, shed its age like a snake discarding an old skin. I like that simile. I don't know if I like her heart dancing, but reality warping around her, thick plume of smoke, spiral upward. Zaroth the genie towered above her, presence overwhelming, ethereal, power radiating in waves. Okay, your heart has called me forth. His voice is a deep timber I am bound to serve. Okay. If I didn't like this, I could restart it and have it go back over again. I could change the mode. I could change which model we're using, or I could hit continue. And I think this is fairly decent. I also could edit a little bit here, and I could edit the beats if I found it was going off track. Some people like to run one stride at a time and edit and then run the next stride and edit. And some people just like to have it run and do the whole thing and see what they've got. I'll continue for a couple more beats and we'll see what happens.
Okay, she's panicked. And we're having lots of description about his voice. Okay, so she her first wish is the warm, comfortable bed. Oh, and so the alley turns into a room. Here we have a foreboding speech. She's got a carpet. Okay. Light of hope began to flicker. Okay, what do you all think about this one? How do you feel about the writing? I personally like it. I thought it was pretty okay. decent as well. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's too bad. But what we can do now is we can let this sit and we can create another chapter one. Let's see, before I do that, I'm going to add here chapter one. We use balanced on this one. So if we come down and let's add another chapter one, you can have as many chapter ones as you want. And believe me, if you've seen some of my projects, I go all out, especially on chapter one. <laughs> haven't been keeping on the chat so okay so for the next one let's try sonnet just because sometimes claude gets a little more flowery uh, but we'll see what it does And we can run things here using my credits rather than yours. We can try some things out. So if I generate the chapter, come on, generate. Oh, it needs to be. Oh, it needs beats. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like to use the same beats because I like to do apples to apples. And if I click the little double document here that will copy it i can bounce over here and i can paste it in so i've got the same beats i've got the same header everything should be the same except them and if i look here it says claude three sonnet it thinks it's going to do 1800 words and it thinks it's going to cost 7800 credits that's like half the credits of the other one that you had used. It is. Oh, it is. Yeah. And if, so you can play around with this and look, if I said Opus 29,000. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely a lot. So that's why I said you might want to try it in hockey, Haiku or Sonnet first. And then if you like it, really like it, you might want to put it back into uh, op Opus. Okay, so here we have it. We're going to generate the pros. Oops, I'll pause it if I can catch it. Okay, I think we're a little bit more descriptive here. We have the cool blue of twilight, which may or may not be the sun telling us time, like it likes to do. Oh, yeah. John says the fun of kid bashing. Yeah, I'm the queen of kid bashing. Uh, Rye, the merchant overturned cart. Okay, she gives him the bread. Uh, continues on the way. She, can, she continues her scavenging. She finds the metal. Raise patterns. Maybe she could sell it. Smoke forth. Um, okay. Dares awaken me. The voice rumbled like an incoming storm. And she trembled on the ground. Uh -huh. Okay, he studies her with his piercing gaze. So we'll have to look and see if he has piercing eyes. If you have a description in your characters, let's bop back to the characters. And uh, 
like I said, I think it got rid of a lot of the, yeah, it got rid of the physical characteristics. But some of the physical characteristics are piercing eyes, striking eyes. If you leave that in your character description, it's okay to have it in there when the character is first introduced. But if you leave it in there, it will be in there every time that character is mentioned. So you do want to treat your character box as fluid. You will go back and edit some things. If your character has a character arc and changes, which we hope they do, you want to reflect that as you go and make those changes as the story progresses. Because you can go back and change any of this at any time. Of course, it won't affect what you've already generated, but it will affect what you're about to generate. Okay, so let's do one more stride just to do apples to apples because we did two on the other one. Okay. Freed from an unjust prison. Gen of immense power. Oh, this is a new one. I didn't know only the pure of heart could break the enchantment. Okay, once again, we're wishing for the soft warm bed. That must be in the outline. We could look. Okay, now she has plush furs and silken sheets and carved headboard. With the chandelier. Now, this is a little bit more foreshadowing for, than I like, but a lot of times you will have to delete the last line, the last paragraph of beats and strides, or especially the chapter, because it likes to give you a summary at the end of the chapter. But what do you think of this prose? Yeah, we got more heart fluttering. I'm going to put a cardiac specialist in some of my books because we have so much heart problems here. Okay, we'll add another chapter one, but first I want to say this is on it. It will tell me if I go back in and look at it, but this way I have it in the title. Okay. So let's add another chapter one. Pull in our beats again. Do we want to do a most accurate? See what it would do? Is there another one you'd rather run? Nobody cares? <laughs> okay, let, let's do a most accurate. And see here again, this is even more expensive than Opus. Hmm. It, it's 32.8. So. Yeah, I would have backed away from that as soon as I saw the price. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> would, would the unfiltered one be of any use on this one? Or is that, would that really go off the morels on the beats? Let's see. Shall we? <laughs> Does okay with thick beats, but it, it can go a little crazy sometimes. Oh, okay. Now it, I think it likes the thin beats, doesn't it? And for this particular... Uh, Beats, we have, they're pretty thick beats. You'll learn that you prompt differently depending on the model you're going to be using. Unfiltered, unfiltered is the one that likes the really thick beats. Oh, is it? Okay. If well, you want to keep it on track. Yeah. Let's see what happens. Like y'all, no lie. I am not exaggerating when I say this. When it first got released and we were testing it out, I had my normal beats and I'm the one that clicks, I'm one of those that clicks it and just lets it generate the whole thing. And by the time it was done generating that chapter, I had three different stories. Unfiltered, you gotta watch how you prompt it. Either really thick beats or only do two beats at a time in it. 
Here we're doing two beats at a time. Okay, she trudged through the damp cobblestone street. Her stomach was growling. Searched for something edible. Ooh, potato instead of bread. Uh huh. <laughs> Oh, here, but here we go. Oh, the There's scent the of bread. warm bread. Mm -hmm. The scent of warm bread. Okay. Boots splash through the filth-ridden puddles. There's otherworldly glow. Huh? That's just we got the everything moon. is otherworldly. Yeah. If it's at night, you have the moon. If it's in the day, you have the sun. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, somebody's after her now. The burly baker. With a meaty fist. That's a good adjective for that. Okay. Okay, so we have the urchin. Oh, and she, okay, so she gives him the potato. Here's the dusty arnet lamp. Okay, she lifted that lamp and rubbed it. Now, Nicole, you think it'll stay on track if I do another stride? Oh, hard to say. You can always <laughs> give it a chance. <laughs> it's cheap. It's been to play with. I'm not hating any of these. <laughs> you know? Okay, he's freed from prison again. Uh, assumptious room. Oh, wait, has she wished yet? No. Nope. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're getting the cart before the horse here. Oh, there it is. Yeah. No, he granted he her, read her mind. There you go. <laughs> Perfect man. Okay. Did I tell me if I paused it again? No. Okay, Riss. So oh, now he's giving her a quest. Oh, the end. <laughs> the end. <laughs> I've had that unfiltered. Really that. Yep. I've had unfiltered repeat. <laughs> the beat like do the all the entire beats that i had in there until i learned how uh -huh. to create the beats like five times in the chapter because they were so thin mm -hmm. so thick beats work better i guess i've had that too and before we actually realized that blank lines were a stride i had instructions in there like your show don't tell and the viewpoint and everything in front of every stride and then a space between them. So I actually have a document that has 84 stri 84 beats in it. <laughs> and what it did, it wasn't, it's not terrible bad, but it was my paranormal shifter search and rescue team. And for every stride, it would give me a rescue scene. It would be a different rescue scene, but now I, I have enough rescue scenes, I can go for the whole series. <laughs> not have to generate any more rescue scenes. There you go. There you go. That worked. <laughs> okay, so this is, oh, and it gave us 670. But, but we ran four. It didn't do too much for each one. It did about half of what the other ones do. do. And, uh, I'm tempted to keep going to see what happens after the end. What do y'all think? <laughs> go for it. It's cheap. You should go for it. See if it recognizes the end. It's my so. credits. Okay, the following dawn. <laughs> <laughs> it lies. Oh, okay. Here he comes. Ooh, the hissing of steaks. I like how it capitalized the eyes because they're real serious about these eyes, apparently.
<laughs> we have to learn. Okay, it wants us to know it's finished with the stride, apparently. However, I don't know who Nilly is or Nillian. <laughs> Because he was nefarian. Nef yeah, okay. Something like that. And this was unfiltered. I will tell you, do what I say, not what I do. You can save yourself a whole bunch of grief if you don't do this. I would suggest you try running a few and finding your favorite and then maybe sticking with it. One of the things you can do is you can start with one and then in the uh, middle, we may already be off the track here, but we've done a few, what we've done four beats. Here we can go and we can go to Mistral and we can continue with Mistral and see how that works. Sometimes if you might want to start a scene with one model and then switch to another one, and that's one way you can control your costs. Um, if you know. Oh, we got the heart pounding through the chest. Okay, then he's coming after her. Wait a minute. I thought the genie took him away someplace. The bakery. She now she's in a sunlit forest. He didn't seem to help her much. So glad you're safe. Oh, we're in it together. This is another AIism. We're always in it together. <laughs> okay. This idea. What do you have in mind? Protective barrier. Okay. Together, they're gonna they're gonna do it together. So. I don't know that I'm fond of that version. But, uh, filter and extra. Okay. Does anybody want to see what most accurate can do? <laughs> I do. I'm dying to see. As, <laughs> as long as we're doing it with my credits, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we'll see if it's worth the cost. And let's throw in the... Beats for us, and we'll generate the chapter, and we'll look at most accurate. And once again, it says it's the 32. Click on generate the chapter. Click on pause. Oh, the sun dipped low on the horizon. <laughs> I'll warn you, if you play the drinking game, make sure you're drinking something not potent <laughs> because we'd all be on the floor okay so here we have the merchant with his cart and uh, she gave him the bread uh -huh. extracted the object her heart raced with excitement. Okay, the genie is here, the twin azure flames. I'm thinking we're getting 
a lot of the AI isms. And I don't think the text is that much ahead of the other models we've got. I agree. In fact, I like Balanced and Sonnet both for this. Me too. And I would probably kitbash Balanced and Sonnet. And see how I really liked it. But this one, let's see. Once you've got the text generated, and you can have it all generated, you have partial generated, don't forget you've got these tools up here. And you may hear these called laser tools because it does laser focus on part of your work. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to say rewrite. And I can tell it to rephrase. I can tell it to make it shorter, more descriptive. I'm going to customize it. Uh, and I'm going to say, not reference the sun. <laughs> Have you tried putting in your style or header to avoid referencing the sun to see if I have I have yes any difference but I haven't been getting it but I haven't been using the most accurate either yeah somebody mentioned it the other day they're like I gotta edit all this out and I and it made me think I haven't gotten it in forever it seems but mm -hmm. I'm using best pros I wonder if it's more of a most yeah. accurate thing it, I think it is Okay, so here we have the day waning painting in amber glow. Okay, on the cobblestone pathway. I'm going to insert that. I, I like that better. <laughs> and it will stay purple until I edit something else. Okay. If I want more description, remember I still have all the described tools that I can use. If I found it was going off track... I could start here, and I could use either the guided right or the right to continue. And if I look at my right setting, I'm using Claude Sonnet. If I wanted it to match, I could change it to most accurate. You could change the model here by your with your write and rewrite what it uses. So you have a lot of flexibility as far as the editing goes. And I usually come back and use these tools more after I have generated the text. I like to generate the text, let the AI do it, see what it does, and then tweak it. But I'm not loving this one. <laughs> Stick it here, too. Uh, But you might want to use most accurate if you really wanted to follow your instructions. So you can do that. And let's see what all this cost us. Okay, most accurate for that the one stride was fifty seven ninety six. Ah, it says errors, no credit used. Okay, that's the mixture. It's not co it's not costing us credits, but it said it would have used fourteen fifty eight. Unfiltered was twenty seven eighty five. The other stride of unfiltered was twenty five seventy nine. It's in the twenty threes. Yeah. Oops. Come here. Come here. Have to make it small so we can see it. The GPT Turbo was 5,000 per stride, and we ran two strides. Sonnet was less than 2,000 per stride. And I thought that Sonnet and Turbo, the pros, was pretty compatible. I didn't see a great advantage of one over the other. I'll make my screen bigger again so you can see it better. And it's sunset, so the bird's yelling. I don't know whether you can hear him or not. So what questions do you have? What what do you think about generating text this way? Oh, <laughs> I thought she might, Ryan. <laughs> yeah, she's perking her ears back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, what the heck is that? 
that's my cockatoo for those who haven't been on with me in classes before. And that's his, the sun's going down, the whole flock needs to be together. Scream. What do you think? <laughs> Is there something else that you'd like to see? You have any questions maybe left over from yesterday? Nothing? <laughs> this is probably something you probably showed yesterday because you did the visualization, but I was curious on, did you do any modifications to make that visual with the nope. right? The only thing I did was this was the text we generated yesterday. And I think that wasn't it. I guess the document titled the land. Ah, yes. Thank you. Oh, but it doesn't have the to your right. prompt. There you go. That's, yeah. You showed you what you highlighted? Yeah. Whoop. Stop. <laughs> yeah, my stream bio document area has been doing that kind of stuff. Lately. That's weird. But I just cut out uh, symbols glinting in the moonlight. Maybe I can find it. Uh, Do you know what AI it uses to generate the the visual? Yes, it uses Dolly three. Okay. okay. And John would like to know how you use Quick Chat and Quick Edit in your workflow. Oh, okay. I did that just a while ago. If I wanted to, let me actually. I can either highlight something or I can, which brings quick edit and quick chat. If I click on that, or I can do control K or command K, depending on who you're using. For edit, I can tell it how I want it edited and it will rewrite it and put it over here. But for, let's see, actually I won't chat. <laughs> let's do a control K. I want quick chat. Ask it to give me the description of the lamp. <laughs> okay. It asked me how I envisioned the lamp. Let it describe it. Huh. Okay, the lamp is made of rich. Do, do, do. Okay, so I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to come up and I'm going to add a new document. And in that new document, I'm going to paste the description it gave me. And then I'm going to visualize lives under plugins. Some of the miscellaneous tools live under plugins. And we keep asking that they get pulled out, but they don't. Okay, so if I click on visualize. We'll think about it for a while. Okay, and here we didn't say anything about the genie coming out of it or the smoke or anything, which is what we had yesterday. So if we insert that in here. I would buy that lamp off Amazon. <laughs> yeah, you... that's uh, really nice. <laughs> okay, once once you insert it, we found you have to refresh. Because sometimes our Display loses its mind. And last night it cost 2,500 credits to generate the visual. I'll have to see what. Yeah, that's not bad. <laughs> that looks more like a fruit bowl or something, I think, but. <laughs> Let's see if I can. 
get it to tell me how much. Yeah, 2,500 credits. So maybe that's a flat rate for Visualize. I don't know. So is everybody doing doing a new project like I advised last night to learn the software? And one you don't care about. I certainly don't care about Lily and the genie, but although I have written a book about a genie, but this isn't it. Mm -hmm. That's how I that's how I started learning. And I'm so glad that you shared with us your intense chapter one method because I did the same thing and now I don't feel so crazy. Oh, good. That's how, that's how I learned. So thank you for sharing that. I have a gazillion chapter one. So you can see on several of these. Oh, uh, ah, okay. Yeah, we had the UPS guy at the door. Yeah, the birds. Really upset about that, too. Any other questions? Anything you'd like to see? I had just mentioned earlier just about using it for nonfiction, but maybe it's probably the same in some respects. It is. Uh, you could, <laughs> well, we talked about it last night in first, and that's one of the ways you could do it. I think let's try something. Once again, didn't, did we do a, I couldn't remember if we did a nonfiction one project by itself last night or not, but let's try to do it with Story Bible. Now this is testing on the fly. I'm not guaranteeing anything, <laughs> but I think we can do this. Okay, for brain. When I do the nonfiction in Story Bible, uh -huh. I only use the genre, style, and then I jump straight to the outline. Okay. Yeah. I was going to use the brain yeah. dump to feed the outline. Uh, um, Okay, so let's say nonfiction article. Uh, style, conversational manner, what else? Uh, friendly, but friendly yet authoritative. Ah, yeah, yeah. Okay, easy to understand. So if we come here, if we look at the outline, it's going to use the genre, the synopsis, and the characters. Okay, so rather than the brain dump, we need this in the synopsis. Because we want to know what it's doing. We don't need characters. So we've got something in the genre. Something in synopsis, but it doesn't look at the style. So I'm going to take the style and I'm going to stick it up in the genre. Because both of these can be used as an overflow bucket for the other one. But for the outline, we want all of that. Check one more time, make sure we got everything we need. Okay, just use the genre and synopsis. That's all we know. So if we generate an outline, see what we got.
Oh, see, it's turning it into fiction. It wants a protagonist named Alex. Alex is another AI name. Uh, an antagonist, rising tension. So it totally ignored our. But now take your, take what you put in synopsis and mm -hmm. make that your chapter one premise, like your chapter one summary. Yeah. And if you generate beats from that, it should. That's what's been doing for me. It's been working for nonfiction okay. for me. Okay. I like the introduction. The first two chapters I wouldn't quibble with, but mm -hmm. yeah. we'll, we'll take that and we'll do that. Okay, and we're only going to run chapter one. Let's create the chapter. And I think Turbo would probably be okay for this. We could also run it in most accurate, too. Uh, and filtered, actually, especially for memoirs, Unfiltered does a really good job. Something about really? that memoir hmm. style, that oh, first part, okay. it nails it. Oh, uh, it's pulling. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, see, it's weird okay. that it's pulling from all, it's pulling from the rest of the outline. That's because it apparently didn't know what to do with that first one. Okay, I'm going to show you something I forgot to show you last night. Almost every box has this little clock on it. And if we click back to the little clock, <laughs> it will show us our history of what we had. And if I go back to the way it was at the first, it says introduce the topic and provide the background. So I'm going to restore this one. And I'm going to combine the first two chapters. Just... I'm going to delete the rest of it. So maybe it won't remember Alex or whatever. And here. Oh. Wait a minute. Why is it picking it? Okay, so that chapter one. Let's add the chapter. And create the beats. Okay. Okay, so we're starting with a captivating antidote. I'll let that go. History of AI. How is it being used in nonfiction? Examples of content, fears that people have. Highlight the importance as a tool, ethical concerns. Include the chapter. Writers should embrace it as a tool. In the chapter with a thought-provoking question. Okay. I think because I said we're writing nonfiction that it wants to talk about AI and nonfiction. So we could do that. Now, this is more of a style and it does that sometimes. The, the last beat or two may have something to do with style. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab this. And I'm going to stick it up here. I'll get rid of 15 because I don't care about a number there. The first number you have kicks off the, this is a beat coding so you don't want the you don't want any numbers in your header okay we have that and if we look we'll get the check beats just to be sure that's the header and these are the beats oh i forgot to delete the last one okay if i come down here 15 is gone now so i can hide it So let's use balance and see what it does. And it's talking about 22,000. We can use most accurate next and see what happened.
<laughs> yes, Alex can have problems with pronouns. Okay, so it's starting out with a picture this. That works. Oh, we have Sam and Athena. Those are new names. Okay. Okay, so that was our antidote here. We no, see it it really wants to write fiction. <laughs> it really truly does. Let me run up and grab this. Yeah, I know. Which, yeah. Heartbeats, okay. Let's go for chapter one again. And we'll stick this in here the way it was. And this is a case where most accurate might help. Let's see. Nope. <laughs> we got Sarah and Alex. Okay. Nope. Nope. Okay, let's try one more thing. Let's go into a blank document. And actually, where did we? We put that in the synopsis, didn't we? What we were trying to do. But we come up to our untitled document. Come in here and let's do I might try more than one thing. Control K. And let's go into quick chat. And let's copy the article instruction. And this is going to go out to GPT-4. We'll see what it does. Okay, so it's given me some ideas. Now, this isn't going to be saved anywhere, I don't think. So what I would do is I would copy it all. And I would put it down here in our text. That was our, no. Nah. In our document. There, there we go. Now we can use any of our rewrite tools on this, our editing tools, and clean it up some. Or we could use, let's try this. Let's go into guided write. And I'm going to pull our same instructions here and guided right now. I'm going to tell it to go. See how different it is. In the ever-evolving landscape,
Hmm. Okay. And this because I because it is bright. Yeah, okay. It did it continued this. If I started with a blank document, I'm not sure what it would do. Let's try that. Let's do another blank document. And don't forget I'm using Sonnet for the pros here. I could change that if I wanted to. I learned to guide and write. I put I need to write an article. And because it has nothing to look back on, it's not going to do a continuation. For this plugin. Okay. Let me refresh. Sometimes that clears things out. And we're still in our untitled. I can go to guided right. I can write my own. I'll paste in this. I will say go. Okay, it did. It gave me the text. It gave me this. Maybe it wanted to do more words, and this is really willing to do. But thank you. That was helpful. Then I don't want to take I can, up any more time. That was very helpful. I can insert it, and here we go. <laughs> but this, I think, the nonfiction is something that's better done in a direct context with the LLM. Yeah, I think so too. And you can do that through chat, and you can do it through guided write. You just have to keep telling it what you want and giving it more and more instructions all the time. Okay, I will stop the share, and I will turn off the recording.